Hi, Family Nazarene. I was asked, like many of you will probably be asked, by Suzanne Hollister to help with the new project they have going on online called Walking Through Matthew. Um, I'm sure some of you have been a part of it. Some of you have seen the programs that have been done so far on Facebook and have enjoyed it. I know I have. Um, and so when she asked me, I first thought, ah, I don't really want to do that. That's not what I do. I'm not comfortable doing that. Um, but I had absolutely no reason not to do it. And so I'm glad that I did because I've really enjoyed it, actually. Um, and I hope to be able to bring you a word that you will enjoy and maybe learn something from this morning and uh, be able to share also. So anyways, I'd like to start by reading the reading God's word. Um, and again, we're in Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. And the nice thing about this chapter that I think is that it's all about faith. They call it the, the faith chapter, the chapter of faith. They, you know, it's, it's just all about faith and what we get when we live our lives based on faith with God. And so it, it's just one of those things that I can't imagine a better time to talk about it than March of 2020. It's... An absolute crazy show out there right now in the world um, with the COVID virus and our inability to do the things that we normally would do. Um, people losing their jobs and being laid off. Uh, you just you just can't even begin to think of all the things going on right now, and it just gives us more and more reason that we need to live our lives based on faith, the faith that God will take care of us, the faith that God will. Um, do the things that are needed to get us through. And and so that's what these verses are about. And so that's what we're going to cover today. So let me start. Chapter 8, verse 1. When he had come down, meaning God, from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. <clears throat> That's pretty amazing that he would have faith like that. <clears throat> so then he carries on talking to Jesus. He says, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to this other one, I say, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Awesome. So, what happened here? Jesus comes strolling off of a mountaintop, and a leper sees him and thinks, That's Jesus. That's the man that can heal me. And he goes to him and he asks to be healed. And Jesus says, yeah, I will heal you of this horrible disease that's ravaging your body. Um, I think we all know that if you were a leper in those times, if you were a leper in today's times, you probably would not have a really good life. People would probably not treat you very well. You would not be looked upon as a, as a clean person. Um, they would not want to have much to do with you. And they would treat you as such. 
which is horrible. So for Jesus to just say, you know what, I'm going to take this from you. I'm going to take this horrible thing and I'm going to, I'm going to eliminate it from your body is an amazing thing. And so he did that. He said, you know what, uh, don't worry about it. It's gone. And it was, it was healed immediately. As he moves on with his day, um, he goes into Capernaum and he comes to, up along the centurion and that centurion then asks exactly what I read. You know, he asked for his servant to be healed for from um, his body being paralyzed and just being under horrible, horrible agony at home. And Jesus doesn't even hesitate. He just immediately says, yeah, yeah, I'll come to your house right now and I'll heal that person. Which is absolutely amazing. Um, and it shows the God that we serve and his true heart is that we wouldn't have those aches and pains and things of that nature and that he uh, he went out of his way to stop that stuff from happening in our lives. What's really cool, though, is the way the centurion reacted to what Jesus told him he would do. The centurion went right into saying, I don't need you to do that. I don't, I don't need you to walk however far away that was to take care of my servant. All you have to do is say the word, Jesus, and my servant will be healed. I mean, what, what awesome faith that is, that this guy just knew. If you just say the word, my servant will be healed, and you don't even have to go and see him. You don't have to go and do anything with him. Just say the word, and he will be healed. And Jesus took that I mean, he just did immediately stopped and, and yelled to everybody, hey, wait, wait, look, come here for a second. Look at this guy. This guy, who's who's not a Bible-thumping pastor of a church, um, goes to church 14 times a week, three times a week, whatever you want to say. Well, this is a centurion. This is a guard that's, I guess how I would put it, is a working man. He's just a working man out there doing his thing doing his duty, um, that just asked, and not only asked, but had faith that Jesus would heal his, his servant. And Jesus just said, yes, absolutely, I will do that. And because you have such great faith, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to take care of it for you. And I often wonder, you know, how, how much faith do we have? How much faith do we have that Jesus will step in at a moment's notice and take care of us? Take care of everything that has to do with us. Um, I know there's times where I lack for that, that kind of faith, where I'm just like, oh yeah, Jesus is just going to take care of this instantly for me. And there's times where I, I neglect to put those needs in his hands like I should and this this particular book of Matthew or chapter of Matthew reminds me that that's what I need to be doing I need to in faith take those things to Jesus and say Jesus please please I know you can I have faith that you can take care of this for me and please take care of it for me and that's that's what I'm going to do more of now that I've studied this more, is I'm going to put more and more on Jesus, on God, to take care of those needs that I have, which I know are nothing for him. He can instantly heal whatever he wants to heal. Um, there are no surprises for him. Like, like Gary often says, God knew a thousand years ago that this COVID virus was going to be all over the world right now. This isn't a surprise for him. He knew it was coming. Now it's our turn to have faith that he will take care of us in our time of need. You know, I, I have faith. I want my faith to be stronger. I want everyone's faith to be stronger that God will take care of us. Does that mean that God's going to heal every person? It doesn't. It doesn't. I wish it did. It doesn't. Um, my dad passed away from cancer eight years ago and I prayed and prayed that God would take that from him, and he didn't. Um, but I know my dad is in heaven now, and I know that cancer is not in heaven with him. So um, pray in faith, church. 
ask for the things that you want him to do and help you with in faith. It's all we can do. That's all we can do is ask in faith and Jesus will guide us. He will give us the things that we need in our lives to take those next steps. Church, I hope uh, I hope this has been something that you can learn from. I hope that um, you learn the lessons that I learned from it. And that is just to turn it all over to God and that he will take care of it. If it's as simple as I don't have enough toilet paper, in these times it could be that simple. Um, I just pray that you would, as a Christian, just reach out to your neighbors, help them with the things that they need right now. If it's a couple rolls of toilet paper they need or that you need, reach out. Reach out to us and we will help. Um, we will help in any way that we can as a church. That's what we're here for. And, and I just pray that um, everyone has a great weekend. I pray that you're healthy and that you are strong in your faith. Um, and that if you aren't, that you sit down today, this very instant, and you pray to God that he will strengthen you and that you will have faith that he will strengthen you and take care of any issues that you may have. I'd like to pray with you at this time. Dear God, just thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to do these little lessons in Matthew. Dear God, I pray that you would just lay your hands on everyone that's watching this video and just intensify their faith. Intensify their ability to lean on you and know that you, above anything else, will take care of them. They don't have to worry about their jobs. They don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from. That we as Christians would help them in any way that we can. That you would have them in your hand and that you would take care of them and just give them the faith to know that that is exactly what will happen dear god i pray this in your name jesus's name amen thank you so much family naz um a couple little things that i was supposed to tell you about tomorrow is our normal church service which isn't so normal anymore but it has been awesome um, due to a lot of our people in our church having a lot of tech savviness and being able to set things up that are actually helping us to remain a church and keep us um, tied together. And so tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. we will have our normal service. It will be on Facebook. It will be through Gary, of course. You know Gary never disappoints. Um, Gary will be bringing us that service tomorrow at 9 a.m. Grab your kids, grab a little snack, sit down with your kids and watch it. It will be an awesome, awesome time where you can sit with your kids and Gary will go over the service. Um, having said that, starting Monday morning, we're going to be back on having these um, walking through Matthew services again. These these little 10-minute services um, where we just go over things and, and do what I just now did. So, um, again... Have a great weekend. I hope everything is good in your family and I hope everyone is healthy. And I will pray for you that it remains that way. And if you need anything, reach out. We have a new thing set up now, needs at familynaz.com. So if there is a need in the church, you can email to that. And we're going to look that over and try to help out any individual in the church that needs some help. Um, so anyways... Have a great day and uh, just keep smiling and know that God loves you. Thank you.